And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer here in the temple, creator of the Silent Kingdom, the one and only Lucky Cat. Who always lands uh, on her feet. Hello. I'm very sorry that I can't really speak English, but I will do my best. Gambarimasu. <laughs> that is that's all that's all I ever ask of pe of people. Um <laughs> so I'd I'd like to start at the begin I'd like to start at the beginning. The origin story, if you will, as I often do here. Um oh. Walk me through the journey that you that you made from, um, pl from playing or playing or playing and or watching, um, Otome games and visual novels to wanting to design it and how you got tuned into the whole the whole genre to begin with. Well, actually, I haven't played many Otome games. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the time, the games that I enjoy the most are. Mm, RPGs mm -hmm. that uh, let you have a real interaction with other characters mm -hmm. and that let you it to de develop develop is that the word yeah <laughs> ah, okay uh, that lets you develop your own character mm -hmm. that's what I enjoy the most um well, I, I guess I have played plenty of Otome games but it's not what I usually go after. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to make the kind of game that I can't find anywhere else. Mm. Mm, for example, I love to, I love games like Dragon Age or Baldur's Gate mm -hmm. 3. But I love Japanese character designs. Mm, much more. Mm -hmm. So I always thought, why can't Japan make a game like those? Just with their kind of narrative that Japan usually has, mm. which I love. And so that's the story. <laughs> yeah. So shifting shifting into that, uh, when it comes <laughs> to video game RPGs, I'd, I did see that you that you've dipped into making making stuff through RPG Maker. How did you first? Um, find out about that system. Well, that was when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember how exactly I found about it, but I, I've, I've always wanted to make a game. So I guess uh, maybe I was searching for the means. I don't really remember, but mm -hmm. I was really, really excited to find that kind of software. I was very clumsy at first, but I made many stupid games for myself. <laughs> well, as as my men as my mentor often often said to me, more often than not, the first thing you do sucks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> very much so. Uh, but it was made with a lot of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've no. Over the years, I've not I've noticed the pattern of pe of people creating things with more passion than common sense, um, or in uh -huh. or in, so or in yes. some cases, just being the just being the game design equivalent of a mad scientist, a mm. something with something which I will freely admit I am I am I am guilty of. Um, it is it is interesting that you bring that. That you bring up both um, Dragon Age, and I'm, I'm assuming you're specifically referring to Origins, not Two or Inquisition. And I love all, but Origins is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Which is un understandable because it's the, it's the most well technically technologically stable of the of the three because. One of them was a rush job, and the other one was b the other one was built on a system that wasn't designed for RPGs. 
Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Inquisition. Well, here, here's the thing. Origins was made using the Unreal Engine, which is mm. which which of course needs no introduction and is extremely stable. And if I were to list the studios that use the Unreal Engine these days, we'd be here for a week, at least. Um, oh. Dragon Age Two also did, but Dragon Age Two was a rush job because they because um, they tried to get the whole thing done in fourteen months, while being yes. a, <laughs> which. <laughs> Is, which is why you have a whole lot of reuse in that thing. Um, Inquisition was made using the Frostbite engine, which was originally made for for the Battlefield games, and oh, I see. they had to spend they had to spend weeks in in order to implement in order to implement groundbreaking concepts like the ability to see your own character. <laughs> I see. And. While I while I like Origins, the um the pro the problem the problem what the problem with the stability was a flow thing, where just what just when you think that you're getting all the way into the story and getting completely engrossed, something breaks. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, but mm. the other reason I the other reason I find. Though the two references you bring up, inter you bring up interesting is because of the nature of the protagonist with both of them. Yes, oh. exactly. In they were more about role playing than the other games, I think. Well, now obvi obviously, obviously that's that's going to go without saying with ba with Baldur's Gate, given given its given its ties to Dungeons and Dragons. But with both with both of them, you the back the background to to a given character is somewhat light, especially more so with Baldur's Gate three than with Dra than with Dragon Age. Mm. Um. Whereas with the with the Silent Kingdom, the the um pro the um Princess Aranis is a has has a far has a far more defined background. Yes, that's that's true. Um, that's because well, first of all, uh, because I'm using RPG Maker, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, I have many limitations, so I can't really make a game where you can c customize customize. Oh. Customize. Uh, what's yeah. the word? I'm yeah, really yeah, sorry. Yeah, customize. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can't do that to your character. Also, because actually, um, this was a story that I have in my in my mind for several years. So I wanted to make this kind of story, and I wanted, I needed a character who has a s strong background story. However, I'm giving the player the chance to decide many of the things that the main character thinks or feels or wants to do. And you can really do a lot of wrong or a lot of good. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on you. Or at least that's my intention. <laughs> I will do my best with that. Now... When it I do I do remember, um, I do remember watching a keynote speech with one of the developers of Alpha Protocol, which is a game that is a a mess that pe that people ha that has developed a cult following because of the strength of its, um, of storytelling, not necessarily story. Mm. But in the in that one, he had he had mentioned. I remember him mentioning that the. That just the amount of cho the amount of choice and the amount of dialogue that it that it um, could create could sometimes result in a t a tumbleweed of t of di of um dialogue if you were to put it on a dialogue tree mm. and in your in your case have you have you um because of the f because of the fact that this is mostly a, mostly a solo project have you 
taken steps to make sure that the choices don't over don't overwhelm too much so that things don't go in too many directions oh um, yes uh, i will try for that not to kill me in the process because um, well some people some people want uh, for example you know what the story is about do you i have i have the i have the cliff notes um and I did. I did go through. I did go through. Par I did go through parts of the demo. Okay. So um, the story is about a princess who needs to murder murder other princesses. So, it. Some people wanted, uh, you to not kill anyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess they want the story to become a completely different story. If you don't kill them, but that's impossible. Even if I give you choices about how you want to go with things, uh, it every path needs to take you to the same point. Otherwise, I will be making three or four games in the same one, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is very crazy. Yeah. All roads lead to Rome. Yes, that that is exactly it. <laughs> The other, the other thing that I've seen, I've seen some, I've seen some developers fall into, and even Bioware fell into this, fell into this trap of when it comes of um of a bit of a bit of di a bit of dialogue mismatch. There's because there's and this is one of those issues that's twofold. On one hand, there's instances of what um YouTuber Lore Runner has called the Tor effect, where the dialogue that someone actually gets from a given choice, and what the what the um, choice summary looked like on a, on a um, menu prompt, aren't exactly the same. Ah, oh, I know what you mean. Oh. Yeah, um, I I have had that problem with uh, games like Inquisition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You choose something, and in the end, you get something that you didn't ask for. Right. Yeah. Um, he calls it the Tor effect because in the Old Republic, um, it this was this was notoriously frequent. Oh really? <laughs> I haven't played that game. Uh, and I've also, I've also, I saw it, I saw it quite a bit as well in the in the Mass Effect tr in the Mass Effect trilogy. Um, uh. The. But it's it sounds like that's it sounds like that's something you're tr you're trying to avoid to make it clear with each prompt with each um prompt what that what that answer is going to give you. Oh uh, yes, it, um, it, I definitely I want to be as clear as possible mm -hmm. about what what the princess is saying. Uh, she will say exactly what you are choosing. Mm -hmm. Oh, the. Uh, the other, um, the other thing, the other thing that I've that I've seen people fall into, I've seen people fall into a trap about is, in re is in regard to what in regard to what what could be what could be said because, and to to, to illustrate this, are you familiar with um, Telltale's work, Telltale Games? Yes, yes, uh, I am. Um. It was a while a while back I ended up replaying The Wolf Among Us. Um, the adap the adaptation of the Fables comic. And the way they have that set up is the tr the options there are what Big B could say. But regardless of your choices, it's still bi it's still Big B. And with some games that off that offer ch that offer a choice, there's there have been moments where or uh, the choices aren't aren't consistent with the character. Mm. And is this is this something that you that you are being mindful of to make sure that any ch any choice that's given any choice that's given even if it, even if no matter how no matter no matter what that it's st that it is still something that the princess could say in that situation. Mm. Uh Oh, okay. Let me, let me see if I understood it well. You mean, uh, if all the choices are going to be 
Mm, in character? Yeah. Or... Um, more importantly, consistent in character. Mm, I, I have thought about this. Um, it, it can't be helped that there will be several versions of the princess because some people want to be kind and some people will want to be a bit cruel. Mm-hmm. So I, I have thought about mm, what will happen in the future uh, when you aren't choosing anything and people uh, need to address you. I, I would like them to know if you have been very cruel in the past and if you are usually usually cruel or if you are usually kind mm-hmm. it, I, I want to take such things into consideration but I can't really prevent players from um, contradicting themselves mm-hmm. for example I, I saw someone uh, I saw someone's gameplay and at first when they were told that they had to murder, murder uh, the princess, uh, they choose, I have no problem with this, with killing them. Mm-hmm. But later on, when they were asked again, how do you feel about this? They said, um, this, uh, this is a very difficult thing for me. This is very sad for me. So I wonder why, <laughs> why are you choosing such different things so i can't really prevent that that's that's on the player Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise i will do my best for the game to know if you are usually one way or another i want the other characters to remember that Mm -hmm. and speaking speaking of that when it came (laughs) um when it came to the depth when it came to the demo um, one thing I'm one thing I'm curious about is what's is um what's some of the takeaways you had in in um see in seeing people pl- seeing people play and seeing how and seeing how they reacted to certain choices. Oh, sorry, could you repeat the question, please? Um, I'm curious how I'm curious what you. Um, what your take was seeing seeing pe- seeing people playing the demo and the kind of feedback that you got? Oh, uh, uh, what I think about it. Mm-hmm. Mm, uh, uh, eto, I I really have a lot of fun watching people play the game and watching their reactions. Mm-hmm. Eto, most of the time, I think they are choosing to be nice to people, which is something that makes me personally happy <laughs> also uh, most people are telling me that they are really enjoying the story and they are uh, emotionally invested mm-hmm. and of course that that makes me very happy too I, I like watching them their reactions as they play uh, mm, <laughs> Because that that gives gives me a good idea of I- if I'm doing things right with the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, that was very difficult to explain. <laughs> but yes, it, usually I'm very happy to watch them play, and I'm very satisfied satisfied with the uh, satisfied. Thank you with their reactions. <laughs> Ah, I I said it. So that be, keep keeping that keeping that um keeping that in keeping that in mind. Um, when it came to when it came to the Silent Kingdom, um, was this a, was this a story that you had that you had writ that you had written out in in its in its total in its totality? Um, before you before you started creating, or was it a, was it a case of an idea that you expanded upon as you developed the game? Oh, eto, a mix of both. Mm-hmm. I have I had this idea in my mind about a princess who has to m- kill 
other princesses. And I knew what characters will be with her. I even knew what she will look like. But I didn't exactly know why uh, killing the other princess will save her kingdom. I didn't really know the reasons or what will happen uh, about the world. Those are things that I came up um, when I started seriously working on this. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I just liked the idea that the main character was a b villain. Villain? Is that the word? Yes. Uh, she had her own reasons, and I guess those reasons are good enough for her. But to the rest of the world, she is really going to do a lot of dama damage. Damage? Yeah. Mm, so I like stories that are gray, not black and white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I said it. <laughs> now, with that, with, that kind, with that kind of thing in mind, because when, when I was going through and, do, and doing my research... Um, the for whatever for whatever reason, there were th there were three there were three words that kept that kept that kept showing up in the back of my mind as I, as I was working, and that that was a dark fairy tale. Um, like I was get the I was getting a lot of I was getting a lot of fairy tale vibes from the, from the um pr from just the way things were presented. Um, was that was that in, was that intentional or was that a or is that was that a coincidence on uh, my end? Uh, I think it 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 was intended or at least uh, I just know that I love fairy tales and I love dark stories mm. and twisted stories. So I guess I tend mm, whatever I do tends to go to those kind of worlds <laughs> so with with that with that in with that in mind um the th the other th the other thing that i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit curious about that i'm a bit curious about is in is in regard to in regard to the world in regard to the world itself um i know that you had i know that you had brought up um Dragon Dragon Age and Baldur's and Baldur's Gate, but I'm <laughs> curious as to what as to why you why you went with fa why you went with fantasy for your for your particular um story and more specifically the um Gestalt fantasy that's that's seen often in um in P I don't like the term JRPG so instead instead I use um console style RPGs um, I thought I went for uh, mm, mm, ah, well, how to pronounce it medieval medieval mm -hmm. uh, Europe fantasy mm -hmm. because that's really uh, what I love the most mm -hmm. at least when I create stories or when I RP with my friends when I ro role play, ito, I love uh, medieval fantasy. Mm -hmm. It's it just uh, so dark. It, it can't be dark and twist, and I love that. <laughs> and I love princess and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yes. And in this, in that's in that same, in that same vein, um, I'm cu I'm curious I'm curious as well I'm curious as well um what what you'd what you'd be ballparking as far as a t as far as a to as far as a total runtime in terms of um hour count. Uh, 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 are you asking if are you asking what I think about uh, the length of the game or did I misunderstood? Yeah, that yeah, that's ki that's kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, how long I think the game is going to be? Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure actually. Um, the game, the demo, the demo is uh, um, one hour and a half, I guess. So if the game has um, maybe three or four chapters more, they might be longer than the demo. But I don't know. I don't. I can't really know until I make it. But hopefully, it will be long enough for people to enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> and truth, truth be told, I would, I would rather have, I would, ra I would rather have a, a more, con a more concise, shorter experience than a, lo than a longer one that overstays its welcome. I.e., oh. I.e., I don't want to be Ubisoft. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. uh, I understand. What do you mean? Uh, actually, I'm the same. Oh. That's uh, actually that's one thing that I didn't like about Inquisition. I loved the game, but um, it, it had too many secondary things to do, and I I wasn't really interested. I just wanted to do the main quest. Yeah. So my game will be just the main quest. Maybe some secondary quests, uh, but very few. Which is under is understandable. The idea the idea of doing secondary quests is is fine, but I do think some developers think think that if they don't if they don't do if they don't put enough content to be a certain amount of time, then peop then they'll have then they'll have complaints about it being too short. Um, it's true. But in reality, it's it should be less it should be less about how short or long the game is and more about how how that time is used. Mm, I agree. I completely agree. Oh. Like one of my f I have I have a one of my favorite um games that could be considered short is um MDK which the best way for me to describe MDK is drugs the game. <laughs> And you have a protagonist <laughs> who has a who has a sniper rifle implanted on his face, and it 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 is a it is a very weird beast. The one in the same in the same way that um, anime director Yuasa is we is weird with his work. Oh. Yeah, I don't know that game. Um, MDK is is an, is an older one, and trying to get it to work on modern piece on modern PCs is tricky. Oh, I but see. The na the name was supposed to be a nod to murder death kill the murder death kill line from Demolition Man, but they couldn't use it. So to be cheeky, they re they referred to it as Mission Deliver Kindness. <laughs> <laughs> I see. But it while it is definitely a sh while it is definitely a very short game, I can breeze through that in an afternoon. Um, there is a moment of it that's that's wasted because you're. Because it's constantly um, changing things up. Mm, I see. Oh. So it's short but very interesting. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's that's cer that's certainly a way to that's certainly a way to put it. And at the very at the very least, even if I didn't like the game, I can certainly say I'm not I'm not gonna forget it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> but. When it but when it comes to when it com because of what you because of what you said, would it be fair of me to say that you're operating on a bit of a act structure with the with the way you have the story planned, like a three or f a three or four act? Hmm. Yes. Um. And I can s I can see why you brought up in the whole overstaying its welcome thing with Inquisition, because you look at that and you compare that to the the big the big bullet points of the story in origins i mean pa past the past um past the o past the opening stuff and seeing and seeing and the and that and the and that first battle with the dark spawn you j you have th you have basically three um hub arcs the 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 one with the the one with the human nobles the one, the one with the dwarves, the one with the elves, and then the f and then the final arc. Mm, that's uh, true. And 
a lot a lot of that could a lot of that could be des could be described as going into a three act structure um a lot of ja a lot of japanese stories do it can sometimes do a four act structure in the form of kisho tenkets but <clears throat> e but either either way i get the f i get the feeling that the way you have the story se story set up is bu is building up speed going through a wall and then resetting the board would that be accurate sorry i didn't understand um what i'm sorry what I'm, what I'm asking about is the no no need to apologize what i'm asking about is the flow you have planned with the story um in ter in terms of that act structure do you have it planned that each act is a bit of a a series of rises and falls Mm, I guess so. Each each uh, chapter will be about a different kingdom. Mm -hmm. There are three kingdoms that you have to visit, mm -hmm. and then mm, I don't know if the final bits of the game will be in the same chapter of the last kingdom you visit, or if I will make it as a new chapter altogether. I still don't know about that. I, I will know when the time comes, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when it comes to those when it comes to those three kingdoms, um mm. I know you're I know you're go I know you're going with medieval, but I'm but are are you taking steps to make sure that th that those individual kingdoms have a distinct visual identity? Oh, uh Mm, well, I will try um, with the limitations that the graphics from RPG Maker will give me because it, uh, I don't make the tile sets. I use the ones uh, that RPG Maker gives me. Mm -hmm. But I still wanted to give each kingdom a different kind of identity. Uh, the first one will be spring the next one will be autumn mm -hmm. and the last one will be winter uh it is stated that the last one uh has snow yeah so yes uh, as as the story goes down i want the different kingdoms to feel more and more gloomy <laughs> is that the word <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, yes. Yeah, which which, given the given the, almost given the almost baroque um fairy tale that we're go that you're going with certainly makes sense. I guess so. Uh, now, with now with that in, with that in mind, with um, I know you I know are. Are you are you doing double duty when it comes to when it comes to both the the um the RPG maker end of things as well as the art? S sorry. Um, are you do are are you handling both are you handling both the um RPG maker end of end of the end of the development as well as the as well as handling the art? Oh, uh, yes. Well, uh, I'm doing everything. I write the story. Mm, I make the maps mm -hmm. and i draw everything every character and the portraits and the cgs mm -hmm. mm, and then i program it and i even translate it into english uh, and then my friend uh, corrects my bad english <laughs> and turns it into good english so yeah it's it's really a lot of work Oh, I think, I think that it. I think that it's. I think that it's develop. I think that's developing fine, and I, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it how it de how it develops in the f in the coming months. Uh, but thank you. with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to to come onto my temple and enjoy the and enjoy a bit of a bit of the madness that happens around here. Oh, uh, it's Megu. Thank, 
we want to thank you because you gave me the chance to talk about my game and this will help me promote it. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm very sorry about my English. Again, again, don't worry. Again, don't worry about that. It's <laughs> it, it's it's perfectly fine. But anytime you see fit to return to the temple, whether it's to discuss further on the Silent Kingdom or to or to de or to delve into into more acts of weebery, the door is always open. As I often <laughs> say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>